So this will be a review of homework exercise 10. And here you are asked to choose from among the multiple choice options, the argument form or the fallacy that is represented in each of the passages. And here we are working within the category of interpretation of similarity arguments. Number one. In 1929, industrial capitalists had exploited natural resources, engaged in uncontrolled speculation, and had a friendly Republican in the White House. During the Trump administration, the conditions are the same. Corporate America and Republican politicians have recreated the conditions that led us into the Great Depression. So now we're headed for another decade of economic disaster like the 1930s. So in this case, again, we're working in the similarity category. We have an argument by analogy, uh, because in this case, what we're doing is we're taking a known historical case, that is the Great Depression of the 1930s. We know about that case, that is we know what the factors were that led to the depression. We know how it turned out and we're seeing similarities in the current economic condition of the country. Um, so this would be an argument by analogy. Some might say also it could be a false analogy. Um, actually, this particular exercise was written before the COVID-19 pandemic, but if you consider the pandemic as one of the major causes of the current economic problems in the country, then of course you might better uh, select false analogy because that's clearly a major difference that would uh, sort of disqualify or discredit the uh, implied similarities um, that exist between the 1930s and today. So in part, I guess it depends on the circumstances. In our current circumstances with the pandemic, it's clearly an analogy, but perhaps because of the big difference, a false analogy. Number two, after the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor and in the midst of the Nazi threat to Europe, the president and Congress quickly instituted a national draft to beef up the ranks of the U.S. military. Now that we are fighting the war on terror and face growing threats from Iran, North Korea, and Russia, it is time once again to institute a national draft. So here again, we're comparing historical circumstances to the present day. Uh, the known case of the historical circumstances. Again, we know what led to that particular decision of instituting a draft. We know how that turned out. And we're trying to determine what's best to do now based on an analogy. But in this case, again, it's likely we would indicate this is a false analogy uh, because certainly with Pearl Harbor and the Nazi threat to Europe, there was already... Um, a war going on. The United States had been physically and militarily attacked at Pearl Harbor. The Nazis had already started a war in Europe. Um, and so that's quite a bit different than just facing the potential for conflict with three countries around the world. And on the basis of that difference, the analogy would be unwarranted as evidence. So we would indicate this is a false analogy. The representatives of one party were invited to the official White House ceremony. Since this was a bipartisan legislative effort, it is only fair that the members of the other party also receive invitations. So the clue here is the phrase, it's only fair, and usually that indicates there's a comparison related to the principle of justice, which indicates this is a reciprocity argument. In other words, we have two political parties in roughly the same or equal position with regard to the particular piece of legislation. One has received an invitation to the White House. Therefore, by justice, the other should also receive a similar invitation, the reciprocity argument. Last year, when a BU player checked the UNH player from behind causing serious injury, the BU player was suspended for three games. 
Now we have a similar situation with a U main player checking the UNH player from behind, causing serious injury. The U main player should also be suspended for three games. And of course, we recognize here, of course, this is an analogy. We have that uh, clue here about a similar situation where we're comparing a previous known case to the current case that's under examination. Uh, the question here might be whether this is a standard argument from analogy or whether it would qualify as an argument from precedent, all right? And in this case, because normally a suspension in a sports league requires some adjudication by an authoritative body, you know, the league commissioner's office or something like that, um, and usually they have a set of guidelines for sanctions for certain kinds of violation, it's probably a better answer to say this is an argument from precedent. Number five, since you have given other students in the class an extension on the paper, it is only fair that I also receive the same consideration. You should give me an extension as well. Okay. Again, we see the it's only fair, which is a good clue once more that this is a reciprocity argument. So students in the same class are in roughly equal position with relation to the professor and the class and the assignment. One student has been given an extension or other students have, and so the student asking for the extension is right to claim uh, and, or make an appeal to fairness, the reciprocity argument. Number six, if marijuana use in the middle school is already a problem when the drug is illegal, how much worse will it be if marijuana is decriminalized? So here we look at, we obviously have a comparison uh, marijuana use in the middle school now when the drug is illegal with a predicted outcome if the drug is decriminalized. So we know what the situation is now in the given case or the known case when the drug is illegal. But the clue here is how much worse, right? That is, if, if the drug problem is bad when the drug is illegal, right? So that's the known case. And that's the less likely thing. That is, that there will be abuse of the drug that when it's illegal. That's the less likely thing, and that's already happened. So this is the clue, the how much worse is a clue that this is the argument by degree or the a fortiori argument, right? So we know that the less likely thing is already happening. So when it's de decriminalized, we can anticipate or predict that in fact it will be much worse. Number seven, in a case of plagiarism two years ago, the student admitted fault and the professor recommended the minimum punishment. In the current case, a student has also admitted fault. Therefore, the professor will likely recommend the same minimum punishment. So in this case, again, obviously an argument by analogy. It's an analogy because we have two like cases compared. We know the outcome in the first case, the known case. The student got the minimum punishment because he or she admitted fault. And so now we're predicting what will happen in the unknown case based on that analogy. But again, because this is a case where there is um, a kind of authoritative judgment given, the better answer, not only is it an analogy, but it's an analogy from precedent or an argument from precedent because of the authoritative nature of the judgment given in the previous or known case. Number eight, since the campus newspaper printed the biography of the student senate's preferred candidate for student body president, it is only fair that they print the biography of the challenger from the student radical coalition. And again, by now you're familiar with the it's only fair, this is a good clue, or variations on this phrase are good clues that we have a reciprocity argument that is candidates in a roughly equal position with regard to or in connection with the student senate and the campus newspaper should be treated equally or fairly if one uh, candidate got a profile in the newspaper then the other candidate should also um, receive the same consideration. Number nine, 
Last year, when the band brought its concert tour to Cleveland, rowdy fans trashed the auditorium and police made hundreds of drug arrests. This year, the band plans a return engagement in Cleveland. We should prepare for another rowdy evening with many more drug arrests. So here again, we know the case from the past, the known case, and we're predicting what will likely happen in the coming instance. And so that's an argument by analogy. Here, not a precedent because we don't have any reference to or um, citation of a particular authoritative judgment, but we are on good or warranted grounds for predicting that what happened last year with the same band in the same place is likely to happen again. So argument by analogy. Number 10. In the case of Smith versus U.S. immigration, the court ruled that the marriage between the citizen and the refugee was fraudulent because the refugee never shared a permanent residence with the citizen. In the Jones case, the government has proven that no residential cohabitation has occurred. Therefore, it is likely the court will also rule this marriage is a fraud. And here, maybe much more obviously, is the argument from precedent. And what makes it more obvious is that we have a citation of a particular legal case, which then becomes the known portion of the analogy that's being um, reasoned here. Right? So we have a particular case, Smith versus U.S. immigration, and that informs the likely outcome in the case of the Jones, similar case of the Jones marriage between the refugee and the citizen. So in this instance, argument from precedent. Number 11, during the 1918 influenza outbreak, some mitigation of the epidemic was achieved by the cancellation of all public events, including town meetings, school assemblies, and religious services. Even funerals were kept strictly private. The similarity with the current COVID-19 pandemic means the same measures would likely work again to stem the quick spread of this dangerous affliction. And so here again, we have a known historical case. It's an argument by analogy. We are uh, anticipating or predicting um, similar mitigation efforts would work in a similar way as they did in 1918. And indeed, if you've been following what's going on in the news, you know that uh, not only with social distancing and lockdowns and that kind of thing, but most public events, big public events, school meetings, even funerals, with the exception of the funerals that are covered by the news, um, even funerals have been uh, strictly private. Indeed, a friend of mine died at the end of March, and I was unable to attend his funeral. It was immediate family only. So argument by analogy. Number 12, when there was the possibility that his corporate friends could benefit from an oil-motivated war, the U.S. president did not hesitate to manufacture the conditions necessary for invading a sovereign nation, an invasion that cost billions of tax dollars and thousands of American lives. It seems probable then that he would not hesitate to force a delay in the release of scientific data damaging to his corporate friends. So in this case, we have two instances compared or uh, held up against one another for investigation. We know what occurred in the historical example or the historical instance. In that case, in order to benefit corporate friends, a war was started. And we might say that's even less likely than simply withholding scientific data. And so we have not just a comparison of particulars, but a comparison of unequal particulars. A war is a much more serious business than simply the withholding of scientific data. And so if the less likely thing has already occurred, we can confidently predict the more likely thing will also occur. And therefore, it's warranted to conclude that it seems probable the president would not hesitate to force a delay in the release of scientific data to his corporate friends. This is the argument by degree. Number 14, the insidious influence of consumerism on our moral well-being 
is like an economic global warming crisis. We do what we want to satisfy our needs without realizing it until it is too late that our habits have led to conditions that are both dangerous and irremediable. So in this case, um, maybe the clue here is the is like a, right, or is like an economic global warming. The economic global warming, which functions as a metaphor, is the tip off that this is a figurative analogy. We're not talking about a literal global warming, not to say that there isn't such a thing, but we're talking about consumerism and economics, and we're using the image of global warming to illustrate. And so we have a figurative analogy here. Then finally, number 14, a passage from the Gospel of Matthew. And the question here is, what kind of argument is Jesus using? I tell you, on the day of judgment, people will render an account for every careless word they speak. By your words you will be acquitted, and by your words you will be condemned. Then some of the scribes and Pharisees said to him, Teacher, we wish to see a sign from you. He said to them in reply, An evil and unfaithful generation seeks a sign, but no sign will be given it, except the sign of Jonah the prophet. Just as Jonah was in the belly of the whale three days and three nights, so will the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth three days and three nights. At the judgment, the men of Nineveh will rise, will arise with this generation and condemn it, because they repented at the preaching of Jonah, and there is something greater than Jonah here. At the judgment, the queen of the south will arise with this generation and condemn it, because she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon, and there is something greater than Solomon here. So we have uh, an interesting passage from the gospel, and the question is what kind of argument do we have here? We see some references to signs, right? And we might look at, and we talked about a previous example where Jesus reasoned from signs, but in this case, he says no sign will be given. So we're not talking about the coexistential or argument from sign. And we are working within the category of similarity. So we look for those comparisons, right? So we see down here something greater than Jonah, right? Or something greater than Solomon. And so uh, if the less likely thing has already happened, that is to say... Um, if we think about uh, Jonah, the case of Jonah, what do we know about the story of Jonah? Jonah went to Nineveh, Nineveh. he preached repentance, the people of uh, Nineveh um, repented with sackcloth and ashes, right? So in other words, their repentance has occurred, and so those people will condemn the current generation because there's something greater than Jonah, by which Jesus means the Messiah, Jesus himself, is present, greater than Jonah, and the people of his time have not repented. So it's an argument by degree. And in the same way, we see the second argument by degree, the second comparison. Uh, the queen of the south, in other words, the queen of Sheba, came from a long distance to visit Solomon to, uh, to see his uh, and hear his wisdom, and as Jesus says, there is something greater than Solomon here, right? So people who recognize, back in the day of the Queen of Sheba, she recognizes the wisdom of Solomon, and she can arise and condemn the generation of Jesus' time. Why? Because the people of his time don't recognize the wisdom that he brings, and there is something greater than Solomon here. So the less likely thing has occurred, that is, people who were not in the presence of the Messiah still repented, still recognized wisdom, and now the people who are in the presence of the Messiah in Jesus' time are not repenting, do not recognize his wisdom, and so uh, their condemnation will be greater. So in two, uh, two particular instances of the argument by degree. So if you have any questions about the items on exercise 10, uh, please post them to the discussion board.